Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios and welcome to Just Paint the Base. In this video, I'll be going over my process for what I decided to call Buried Crystal Bases. I originally designed this base style to match the aesthetic of the game Rivenstone, and while that game may never see the light of day, I really liked how these bases turned out. I'm going to get things started with a flat grey midtone. I'll be using P3 Iron Hull Grey. This step is really straightforward, it's just a base coat everywhere, just making sure I don't paint the model. Now you could replace this grey with literally any other colour you want. A nice rich ochre would work really well, a Martian red, pretty much anything. Next, I'll be sketching in some long cracks in the base using Higgins Black Magic. A black paint would work well here too, but I like the way Higgins flows from the brush. I already use Higgins for my comic style work and it just made sense to use it here as well. I'm creating elongated cracks that merge and diverge, all running more or less in the same direction. This helps them feel natural, like they're cracking along the stress lines of a rock. As I'm doing this, I need to create some fully enclosed hollow areas. These will contain the buried crystals. I'm also creating one or two hollows that I'm just filling with black ink so that it looks like there's not crystals absolutely everywhere. This is kind of unrelated, but I also decided I wanted to create a drop shadow underneath the miniature, so I'm creating a black shape that vaguely matches the outline of the miniature, just filling in the spot beneath him. It means there's an area I don't really have to detail as well, and it does make the miniature just stand out a little bit more off the base. Now, my original intent here was to use P3 Mora White to create a base coat for the stones, and then liven them up with some Vallejo Mecha Color Fluoro Magenta. The Fluoro Magenta ended up being way too thin and translucent, and this didn't really work well, but I left this step in the video so A, you can see that I make mistakes sometimes, and B, the white just doesn't show up for no reason. Now I'm going to add some depth to the base, mixing a bit of a darker grey into the base coat color. Here I'm using P3 Asheth Grey. I'm painting this darker grey into the open areas, effectively leaving an edge highlight around all the cracks I just added. The value change here is a bit subtle, but all I want is some gentle shading. I still want the base to look fairly flat. Now I want to smoothly blend those middle areas with the base coat. I've added a little iron hull grey back into the mix from the last step, plus a little water so it's not as opaque. I'm painting this new mix along the transition between the base coat and darker areas, letting it blend them together. Okay, here's the Fluoro Magenta I mentioned earlier. It's a great color under the right circumstances, but it's just not opaque enough for this. Digging through my stash, I found this old bottle of Vallejo Game Color Warlord Purple that still has some life left in it. This is a really nice bold magenta that'll work well as a base coat for the buried crystals. To highlight the facets of the crystals and make them look, well, crystally, I'm going to use P3 Mora White. 
Since the crystals are buried and uncut, the facets don't need to be symmetrical or really precise. They just have to exist. I'm basically creating a series of V's, highlighting what might be two edges of a facet, and then branching another facet off the corner of that V. These edges are pretty rough, and that's okay. I'll mix in some Warlord Purple soon and blend them out a bit. Here I've made a 50-50 mix of Warlord Purple and Mora White, and I'm using that to smooth the white edges into the purple base coat. Now I'm using Mora White again to re-establish some of the brightest points and sharpest edges. P3 Mora White is one of my two favorite white paints, the other one being Pro Krill Bold Titanium White. Whereas Bold Titanium White is very strong and very opaque, Mora White is a little bit more fluid. While also quite opaque, it's a bit easier to smoothly blend with and I prefer it for mixing with other colors. I want to add a bit of a glowing effect to the crystals, so I've thinned down some Warlord Purple with a little bit of water and I'm painting that along the outside of the cracks closest to the crystals. This little bit of purple spilling outside of the crystal creates the basis for a sort of quick and dirty OSL effect. Now you could take this further and add the same glow around some of the other cracks, implying that there are more crystals breaking through the surface that we haven't seen yet, but I felt like keeping this pretty simple. Now that I've got the basis for the glow effect laid down where I want it, I'm doing a second pass nearest the crystals to strengthen the purple color a bit more. To smoothly transition the glow effect back to the base coat, I've mixed some Iron Hull Grey into the thinned Warlord Purple. I'm painting this along the edge of the purple glow, fading it back to the grey. Finally, the only thing left to do is painting the base rim. I've chosen Citadel Corvus Black, a slightly faded off black that reminds me of a well-worn black t-shirt. After adding a second coat to strengthen the opacity, the base is done. While it remains to be seen whether the Hordes of the Risen will ever march across the table, I can think of dozens of other places to use this style of basing. If you use this tutorial, I'd love to see your work. Tag me on Facebook or Instagram, or just comment here. Until next time, do something epic, and just paint the base.